How's it going everyone? It's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at a device from Nubia's Red Magic. Uh, so this is the Red Magic 6R. The R stands for racing. I feel like every gaming device is out there these days. Try to find a, a way, some sort of way to name it so that you know that it's a powerful device. So like racing, GT, Pro, all these extra names that everyone's trying to come up with. Anyway, this has got a lot going for it. It's got a large display that's really colorful. It's got uh, shoulder buttons. It's got fast touch sampling rate. It's got high resolution display as well. Well, 1080p by 2400, uh, 20 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, it's got 144 refresh rate as well, 144 hertz. Uh, so if this is not a gaming device that's affordable, I don't know what else is. Let's take a look. So inside the box, you get everything you need to get started. You get a uh, power adapter in there, which is also 30 watts for fast charging. You get a USB to USB-C cable in there for charging. It comes in this nice red color and it's long enough so that you can actually charge it and uh, use it while it's charging and not have to sit so close to the charging station. You also get a quick start guide and warranty information. So do give that a read and keep it safe and secure. You also have a silicone case in there as well to keep it nice and uh, pristine throughout its lifespan. So. You can keep it nice and clean if you wish to do so. The case itself, it also has a cutout for those shoulder buttons, so you don't have to worry about taking it off when you need to game on the go. In the box, you also get a 3.5 mil, uh, a USB-C to 3.5 mil uh, audio adapter as well. So if you really want to plug in your analog headphones, you can still do so. The screen protector is also pre-installed on the device itself, so you don't have to go out and buy that as extras, which I quite like it when people do that. So cases in the box, screen protector pre-installed, you're good to go. Closer look at the device itself. So if we look around the device, on the left side, there's nothing there, but it's nice and slim, pretty slim profile as well. So it's not as chunky as you normally have it with other gaming devices on the market right now. They usually come uh, chunky with all this flashy lights all around it, like the ROG phones, for example. Take a look at those, or your Legion phone. Uh, you see those sort of like gaming-esque looking device, but this is nice and subtle. It's understated, but it's rocking a lot of power. So on the right side, you have your shoulder buttons, top and bottom, so you can customize those. We'll talk about that uh, shortly. And then below that, you get your volume rockers, so you can change volumes, and you get your power button as well. So this doesn't have fingerprint sensor built into the power or anything like that. It's not a physical button. That's actually built in underneath the display, and it works pretty smooth as well. It's got face unlock, so you can also unlock it with your face, and that's pretty cool as well. It works every time, and it's pretty quick as well. There's no complaints in that area at all. Up top, you have your microphone. Uh, that's right at the top. And then if you look at the bottom, we have uh, one single firing speaker there. You have a USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and you also got your dual SIM card slot. You can't expand this using a micro SD card, unfortunately, but I think if you choose the right option when it comes to storage options available, then you'd be okay in that sense. On the back, we have a quad camera setup. So a 64 megapixel quad camera setup with flash. So the main 64 megapixel uh, sensor is a f1.8 aperture with 0.8 microns of pixel size. And it's the Sony IMX682 sensor. Then you then have an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera for your ultra wide angle, and wide angle shots. So you can take some nice architecture photos if you wish to do so. Those two are the main cameras that really matters here. You also have a macro camera, which is five megapixel f2.4 and a depth sensing lens, which is two megapixel at f2.4 as well. That ultra wide angle lens is f2.0 and uh, it takes some decent photos, enough photos to be able to share them on social media, but this is a gaming device. So I'm not gonna get too much into the camera sector, but when we get into the menu for the camera features, you can see all the things that you can do on there. You can shoot uh, full HD videos, not 4K, unfortunately. And uh, you can switch between that 64 megapixel main camera. You can dial it down if you wish to do so. It's got HDR on there. And so many camera features as well that are quite interesting, like, uh, uh, you know, like a portrait mode on there. You've got night mode and some extras on there that uh, Red Magic have actually included in there. Some of them are quite fun to play with, actually, so you can blur out the background and have that uh, sort of like speed effect on your photos if you need to do so. The front facing camera is actually one of the best that I've used on a smartphone. Uh, beauty mode can be completely switched off and you can get those nice natural uh, sort of results from there. As long as you have good lighting that is. And that's the same as the main cameras on the back. As long as you have good lighting situation like daylight, then you're good to go. You can take pictures that looks really good. But as soon as you lose lighting or there's no uh, studio lighting like this, then you lose photo quality and video quality as well. But otherwise, 
I think it's generally okay. There's nothing wrong with the camera at all, but again, not something to write home about. The display itself is a 6.67 inch AMOLED display. And as I said earlier, it's a 1080 by 2400 and 29, 20 by nine aspect ratio. And you can get always on display as well, which you can also modify in the camera, in the display settings itself. So you can customize it and change the look of it. At the moment, I've just got a basic one and it that came with it and it just does the job for me. But you can modify that to suit your need. Um, one thing that's also here as well is there's not many much uh, bloatware on there which you normally get on smartphones this day. So you get the basic Google suite on there, like Gmail, Play Store, uh, Google Chrome, etc. But other than that, there's not much going on here. You've got external device application to connect to external devices. And uh, if we draw the uh, tray uh, down right from the top, uh, one thing you notice before I do that actually is right at the top, you see NFC as well. So you've got NFC with this and you also see the refresh rate that's active. So at the moment, I've got 144 hertz refresh rate as standard on there. Just leave it as always on, on there. If we then go back to that draw, like draw it down from the top, the tray at the top. You have options to go into game space, which I'll go more into in a second. And then if we go across, uh, you then have the option to change the refresh rate right on there, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to deep dig, sorry, into the settings to actually get to your refresh rate. And on here, you have the option to go from 60 hertz, 90 hertz, 120 hertz, all the way up to 144 hertz. And that's one of the best on a smartphone at this price point. So that's something to consider. If you're really, really into your gaming, as well as you know, just general using your generally using your phone, and you want a smooth scroll and stuff like that when you're browsing the web, for example, this is definitely one to consider. Of course, you have eye care as well. You have dark mode, and you can modify the options that are on here as well. So you can change it around and put stuff that you really want to see on there. You have split screen as well. You have picture in picture for small window, so you can move it around. So it allows you to use it in one-handed mode, for example. That really works. And one thing I will point out is on here, the screen is really bright. So just going from low brightness all the way to the top, it looks really good. Or you can just leave it on auto brightness and it does the job very well. Going into the settings options and we're going to display. Uh, so here you can see that refresh rate option as well. So there you can change different things to suit your needs. So you can go from 60 all the way to 144 Hertz, like I already mentioned, and you got font size as well. So there's not much options here to actually change apart from maybe night lights. And you can adjust your eye care mode and stuff like that too. You know, good for eye fatigue and stuff like that. You then have always on display settings, like I was saying. So here you have different options available so you can change them around and customize it as well. But I wouldn't dig too, dig too much into that. That's all software settings and things that you can actually do. There's Neo AI, which uh, when you go into Neo Speed, for example, the phone is able to use AI to determine how it manages the system, the processor and all that stuff so that this runs at the best. It can be running the most optimal mode. It can be at all times, depending on what you're actually doing. So when you're gaming, for example, this will run at its full capacity. And when you're just doing regular uh, web browsing, it might dial it down a bit to help you save that battery in there. Talking about battery while we're here as well, this gives you 4,200 milliamp hour battery. And for me, this runs all day long and I have a bit extra the next day as well. So battery life is really good on it. And of course you get that 30 watts super charge as well, or fast charge, not super, uh, whatever they're calling it these days. So you can still charge this up very quickly without having to wait around before you can game again. In terms of the processor in there, we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 processor and a 12 gig of RAM with LPDDR5, which works together to make this very smooth as well. So if whether you're gaming, whether you're using regular web, web browsing or whatever you're doing on your smartphone, you experience absolutely no hiccups at all. And for around 519 pounds for the top spec that you get here, so that's 12 gig of RAM and 512 gig of internal storage, that's a lot of bang for your buck. And this doesn't give you any issues at all. It just works really smoothly, very fluid, especially when you're gaming as well. It just works really well. And for that price point, it's something to really consider when it comes to gaming smartphone or just a powerful device on the market right now. Elsewhere, you get 5G as well. So if you have 5G connectivity where you are, you'd be able to use 5G with this. Unfortunately, you don't get that expandable storage, which I wish they did. And the speaker as well, uh, where it's placed, it means when you game in with the shoulder buttons right at the top, you might be blocking the actual speaker as well, uh, which can be annoying at times. But if you plug in your headphones, you can enjoy, uh, you can have a better immersive experience when it comes to gaming. But the speaker still works really well. It's more than enough for listening to music while you in the shower or something like that. Although this doesn't have an IP rating that I'm aware of, so be careful when you use it around water. There's also a 429 pounds version as well, which gives you eight gig of RAM and 128 gig of internal storage, which is not as much as that 512 that I really like, which I've got here. But if that's something that you're not gonna need, then you can save some money and go for the cheaper option. Back to game space though. So if we load up game space by either drawing down on the top of the screen, dragging it down and selecting it, or you can go into the menu option and actually select the application itself. This then shows you your game library, which you can change the way you can see it. So you can have it like green, 
grid or like, you know, some sort of like scrolling window or images from your gaming experience. So you can take screenshots, for example. So you see your gaming library here and uh, you've got external device libraries. Also, you have an external de device you can do so. By the way, while I remember, there are various uh, accessories options available as well, including one to keep it nice and cool because one of the downsides to this, as it's a slim device and running triple eight Snapdragon processor is this gets hot over time, especially when it's under pressure, when you're gaming on here, like playing Call of Duty, it gets hot over time. So that's something to consider if you're looking for accessories. But back to this uh, game space though. So once you've selected your game, for example, if we select uh, game uh, Call of Duty from here, wait for it to load, loads up pretty quickly, just tap it and it's loading already, ready for me to start playing it. And uh, once you get in there, you can drag the screen from the side, so from the right side of the device. So you can see your CPU, what it's doing. You can see your GPU as well. You can even see your network speed as well and your screen brightness. So you can adjust this to suit your preference. And uh, you also got game enhancement. So if we select game enhancement, uh, you can see different options available like performance. You can have uh, on the performance, you can select auto mode. You can have GPU turbo, CPU turbo, super performance. Now for me, I live in auto mode because I rely, I trust the device to actually give me the most optimal version of what's on under this uh, chassis here. So give me the best optimal performance possible. If we go into show, I love the animation, animation on there as well. If we go to show, this is to do with the actual display settings. So it can go from defaults to car games, for example, to shooting games and then MOBA. I'm not sure what that is, but if you know what that is, drop a comment below. And as always, you have auto mode as well, but I select shoot because I'm playing Call of Duty. So this allows me to have a better visual experience when playing that. You also got gyroscope, but Call of Duty is not enabled for gyroscope. So that's probably something more uh, for the car racing drivers out there if you wanna use gyroscope to do your control. You then have option for your refresh rate, so you can select that. You got aiming assist if you have a gamer that's compatible. You got manual record. Uh, you also got a small window display, which allows you to select another application and move it around the screen. So, for example, you can have uh, YouTube, for example, that gives you a walkthrough of the game that you're playing. So you can actually watch that at the same time whilst you're gaming. You can you then have macros, so you can record different macros. You got record to record the screen. You can lock the touch screen as well. Uh, you got block messaging, so you don't get distracted. And you've got other options as well on there to just make sure that you're concentrate, concentrating on the gaming that you're actually doing, your gaming experience, so you don't get distracted at all. The shoulder triggers can be modified. Depending on which game you're playing, you can select shoulder triggers and uh, uh, apply accordingly. So when I'm playing Call of Duty, for example, I've attached them to aiming and also crouching as well. So I can just press it quickly and it gives me that upper hand when playing online against other comp uh, opponents uh, online. And uh, if we look right at the top, you've got options for some applications like messaging, Chrome, uh, Facebook, etc. But again, these are things that you probably won't use, but it's there if you need to do so. But overall gaming experience is really good. One thing I will say though is this attracts fingerprints so much. So fingerprints all over the place. And uh, the display as well is quite glossy. So uh, in terms of reflection, so when you're playing, when it's uh, when there's a big sunshine behind you, you might get some, you know, the glare and you know, that kind of stuff. And the bezel's not too big as well. So overall, this is a really good gaming device to actually consider. It's more than capable. It's got the latest, uh, one of the most powerful uh, software on there. It's got Android 11 uh, and, you know, powerful processor chip in there. And camera's probably the only thing that's my least favorite thing about the smartphone. But when you're buying phones like this, you're not really buying it to be a photographer on the go. Although it's still more than capable of capturing good shots that you can share on social media. So that's it for the Red Magic uh, 6R. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. Make sure you smash the like button and hit that bell notification. So every time I upload a video like this, if you like it, you get notified uh, so you can give it a watch as well. And make sure you share it. Some of my find it useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.